Hey, you sleeping? Wake up. We're starting. Let's go. Three, two, one, go. Range 43,000 kilometers and closing. Looking rather dark here on the bridge. Very heavy shadow emphasis, it looks like. Maybe it'll be a more dramatic tone. We'll see. Unclear whether it intends to attack or merely communicate with us. Thank you, science officer. Sometimes I forget he's not just a commander, he's the science officer. Aliens. Oh no. <laughs> Anytime you hear a disembodied voice, never good news. You will turn back immediately. Vulcan, Captain. English. It was Russian, sir. Every word. Oh. oh. Telepathy. Unquestionably. Most impressive. Our orders are very clear. <laughs> what if Scotty came in? It was speaking Scottish. That's not a language, Scotty. <laughs> <laughs> We hope that you will understand that our intent is to establish peaceful relations with you. Of course, Sulu's just not there. Boy, I think he's been on every episode this season so far, right? Yeah, we haven't been missing anybody. It was a nice streak, but it came to an end. Probably the longest streak in any of the other seasons. Coming off possibly my favorite episode of the season last time. I'm a little nervous about this one. We have transported down to the Malkotian planet. Oh, look at this. I have encountered conditions oh. which are completely contrary to what we were prepared for. Full fog machine. <laughs> I knew it had to happen. It's a fine time for that transporter mechanism to break down. He thinks they were just transported into nowhere. <laughs> that is interesting, though. Like, one of the rare times we didn't see them beam down or anything. They just, like, walked into frame. Maybe it was trouble to have a good effect with the, all the fog. Aliens. <laughs> Floating head? <laughs> what was that, a lizard or a brain? Uh, well, it looks uh, just like a disembodied head. All right. Yeah, so far I like the choices of them knowing all the other languages to communicate with everyone on there. Yeah, so far it's a it's a solid start, I gotta say. Who's the director? Vincent McKeeby. That's a fake name. That's, <laughs> I, Joseph, that's Joseph Peevney. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> it is done. <laughs> what? What is he to do a duel? Fascinating. What was the name of the episode? Spectre of the Gun? Yeah. Where are we now, Captain? Are we gonna get a Sheriff Kirk now? And these, Captain. Beautiful specimen. Crude, but dangerous. This guy to really not know what a gun, a class of gun is. Two individuals at close range. This could be as deadly as phases. Yeah, they've also addressed guns, like in uh, the episode Shore Leave, I think it was... It might have been Slew that was, like, fascinated with the gun, but he's not here, so... Yeah, yeah. What's the matter with us? We're talking like we really are in Tombstone, Arizona in 1881. October 26th, 1881. I don't know. I'll say that right now. Ike! Frank! Billy! Tom! Ike Clanton. Tom and Frank McClary, Billy Claiborne, Billy Clanton. Two factions fought for control of the town of Tombstone. Is that what the movie Tombstone is about? Oh, yeah, probably. I don't know anything about any of this. So, look at this guy. I like how it's supposed to be a saloon, but there's nothing behind the doors. <laughs> yeah, like... I don't understand, are these just like NPCs made by this thing as well? That's one thing we can be sure of here. Death is real. How do you know death is real? Are these people real? I don't, I mean, <laughs> I don't know. I don't think so. Oh, wait, but now there is a place. There's just no walls. Oh, Billy. Oh! But it couldn't keep you out of town. Oh, you knew that. Come on. <laughs> oh, please tell me I get a Western classic duel. If I remember correctly, that would involve you in what was called the fast draw. I like how the only one knowledgeable on Earth history is Spock. <laughs> yeah, it's the Vulcan, yeah. You'll dirty yourself with this scum, come on. Get your hand off her. Uh -oh. oh, no. 
Now, we don't want any trouble. If you don't want any trouble, what are you doing in my town? Just leave us alone, Mr. Earp. That's all we ask. You'd like me to draw, wouldn't you? All right. I will. Soon enough. Close, Ike. Lucky there wasn't two of them. You boys watch it. I assure you, sir, we shall watch it. Billy, you were wonderful. This has just been like an extremely long scene. Uh, <laughs> Indeed. Let's check out. What can I do, Captain? You know we're always supposed to maintain good relations with the natives. <laughs> Who do you think I am? Ike Clinton. <laughs> Who do you think you are? <laughs> but I'm Captain James oh, no. T. Kirk of the... He's actually telling him. We're not really here. We're from the future. <laughs> <laughs> There's also just such like a lack of score. Like it's just like the wind blowing in the background. It's very interesting. Have you ever seen clothes like this before? Sure. Where? On the Clinton. <laughs> <laughs> Don't make no difference who I think you are. Your problem is, who does Wyatt Earp think you are? <laughs> Wyatt Earp, I've definitely heard that name before, too. I think there was a movie called Wyatt Earp, but I didn't watch that either. James Kirk. I'm aware of the I'm name. I'm afraid there's been some sort of misunderstanding. Clinton, I don't know what you're trying to pull. You've got until five tonight to get your horse-stealing scurvy crew out of town. <laughs> oh. oh! It's like, come on, Kirk, adapt to the situation. You adapted at first pretty well, but now you're like, you can't, it's obvious you're not gonna break. If you're in town at 5.01, we'll kill every one of you, whether you draw or not. How do they even know what time it is? <laughs> I like how he went there to try to change it or, like, break it, and he ended up setting up the time for them to get shot. The actual <laughs> time in history. Taos Lightning, straight bourbon. Try some in small amounts that was considered medicinal. <laughs> Back in the day, that's all they had for medicine. Drink some alcohol. <laughs> You'll be fine. Where are we going, Captain? To exercise the better part of valor. Uh, yep, they can't leave. I wonder if we'll learn anything about this thing they came across. <sighs> My guess it's one of those that we don't. <laughs> Force field. Or he'll, like, spare the guy's life and it'll be like, You have shown that you have compassion. It is obvious the Melkotians are not going to permit us to leave this town. Like how the clocks are floating in the air. This is seriously what a dream feels like. Isn't that kind of like what it looks like? Like how a dream is just weird for no just explanation? Bits. Yeah, just bits and pieces. Bones. The venom. The plants. Can you make use of that? A tranquilizer. I need a mortar and a pestle. Check out mortar and pestle. <laughs> oh no, not the teeth puller. That's what a dentist was back then. Crude, but very usable. I wouldn't touch that stuff if I was you. Oh, you don't have to worry. I know how to handle this. He's <laughs> just stealing it right in front of him. That stuff ain't mine. It belongs to him. You'd better ask him. My name is McCoy. That joke is all around town already, McClowry. I love that everyone's aware of this, of their joke about their other identity. I think it's a pretty small town there. <laughs> Go on, take the stuff. Have some more fun. Only best you be finished before five o'clock. Because at one minute past five, you'll find a hole in your head right from this gun. Ooh! Doc Holliday, another name I feel like, you know, it would make this scene more effective if I knew who that was. Yeah. I like his little assistant guy, though, who was all terrified. That was a nice touch. This is my favorite part of the whole episode right here, this storyline. Why don't we just turn that dance into a wedding ball? It would be so heavenly. Might. Uh, he's afraid of commitment. <laughs> Even though none of it's real. <laughs> yeah. He was all in on the relationship until she brought up getting married. I warned you, Clayman, stay away. <laughs> oh, jeez. You don't have to take anything from that scum, not while I'm here. Ooh, give him that bloody nose. Get your hands off her. <laughs> oh, he's double pistoling. <laughs> oh, oh, 
Oh shit! There's nothing I can do, Jim. Come on, say it. Oh, they changed it up a little bit. They broke the cannon. There's nothing he can do because he doesn't have any of his tools. He can't even tell if he's dead. Captain, we can't just stand here and take it. Yes, we can. But they murdered Chekhov. If you think I'm going to... Trying to push us into something we're not ready for. And it is not yet our time. What? 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 It... Did they bury him? Did they throw his body to the side? What did they do? <laughs> they just walked away. We all knew the risk when we joined the service. I let it go. Damn, Bones. Yeah, Bones is usually the, the most emotional one. Ah, let it go. Mr. Spock, Chekhov is dead. Spock will have no truck with grief, Scotty. It's human. Oh, now they're chastising him. Bones, Scotty. Captain, it's quite all right. They forget I am half human. That was a nice scene. Yeah, that was really nice. Looking for somebody? I want you to stop the fight. Stop it. Nobody in this town will deny you your right to your revenge. I gotta say, the casting was perfect for all the people that look like they belong in the 1800s. I can't kill them! Yeah. I can't kill them! Kill them any way you can! I doubt that this combination of things was ever used for any purpose quite like this. Perhaps they would have been if they'd had your ingenuity, Doctor. <laughs> see, see, see Pone's face after that? It's like, huh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, a compliment. How long will it take the tranquilizer to have effect? Three or four seconds. How did you manage to test it? It has not been tested. <laughs> Nothing can go wrong. Up to now... Everything is How gone can you wrong. Say I that? want to test it now. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> All right. On one condition, that I'm wide awake and with you at five o'clock. Come on, take a shot before you go down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you called that one. How are they gonna make him inhale that? <laughs> yeah, I know. That's what I was thinking. God damn, he's taking a big hit. <laughs> <laughs> when it's the new guy's first time. You still feel all right? Oh, never felt better. No dizziness, no sweating, no palpitations. It doesn't work. But have they considered that none of this stuff is real? It's all just been created by this alien? It's doing a good job of, like, keeping me interested in, in what's going on. Whoa! <laughs> Whoa! Oh, it just teleported them right at five? <laughs> like, you have to be here. They're about to be forced into this duel. Physical reality is consistent with universal laws. Where the laws do not operate, there is no reality. Chekhov only died because he thought he died? Because he got I shot? I examined Chekhov. He's dead. But you made your examination under conditions which we cannot trust. Kirk already smiling. I know the bullets are unreal. Therefore, they cannot harm me. We can't just turn it on and off. We must. Spock. Vulcan mind meld. Very well, sir. I feel like they're making any excuse to pull out the mind meld every episode. So, the tranquilizer didn't work because there was a slight doubt that it wouldn't? Like, they just accepted that it didn't work, therefore it didn't? I don't know. <laughs> like they said, if there's one second, a little sliver of doubt, it won't work. Oh my god. They will not pass through your body, for they do not exist. They do not exist. The set's not that big. How far are they walking there? <laughs> this is awesome. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Oh, I love that shot of the four of them. She got a shirt. This one's real.
That guy's facial expression was perfect. What? Oh, here we go. Oh no, the snap zoom. Captain, I <laughs> okay. don't understand. Neither do I. <laughs> <laughs> Captain Kirk. Damn it. You did not kill. Now he's just in space. Sought you out to join us. Our mission is still one of peace. No thanks. Approach our planet and be welcome. The delegation will come out to meet you. Hey. Our warning threats are over. This is basically what I predicted, by the way. I wonder how humanity managed to survive. Well, he just showed you. We overcame our instinct yeah, for the violence. Instinct, you just didn't do it. Yeah. Nice little harmonica to finish the episode out. All right, so that was Season 3, Episode 6, Spectre of the Gun, Star Trek, the original series. Um, and quite an interesting one. I don't think we can really say we've seen one like that before. There's a lot of stuff I liked. Um, but I just have to say, overall, it felt a lot of the time like when you watch a show like, you know, Family Guy or The Simpsons or even like South Park. And they do an episode where they're like, we're going to do a parody of this. You know, this movie or this thing. And like, if you haven't seen that thing... There's really, like, only so much enjoyment you can get out of the episode. Like, you can still watch it, and there's funny things in it, but overall, you're like, well, I would enjoy this more if I understood all these references. And this is the first time I felt like that watching Star Trek. I mean, they've had references to stuff before that I haven't, you know, gotten, but it didn't get in the way of the episode. This time, it felt literally like, because I don't really know the whole story of, uh, you know, Tombstone and Wyatt Earp and all of these people, that I really was missing a big part of what they were going for. Uh, but I will say, the whole ending standoff duel was one of the most badass sequences in the show, period. So there was still a lot I really enjoyed. Yeah, I need that. I need the shot of the four of them, like, lined up like that, like, on a shirt. Like, that was great. That whole setup, the lighting, even though it's like a backdrop set, they still made it feel real with the wind and the lightning and the lights flickering. I think, I think this, even, even though it's just clearly like a red backdrop, I think the set design was probably the best part of this whole episode. From the lighting, like everything is super shadowed on the Enterprise, to them coming in the fog in, in the beginning. Uh, just the town, like even though, it, and it, it's the reason it looks like this. Obviously it is through this stuff together, or maybe it was a, a renewed set from something else, but it makes sense in the canon of the story. It's like, oh, it's just a, a made up dream experience. Like it makes sense on both sides on why it looks, <laughs> on why it looks ridiculous. <laughs> they open the door to the saloon and there's no walls. Like, I find that hilarious, but it makes sense. It, it, it works. But I got to say, I think, yeah, I think the ending is my favorite part. Uh, you know, I'm not, as soon as I heard that voice, I'm like, oh, God, here we go. But the whole reason, <laughs> but the whole thing, it's like, oh, we set this up. So if any, like, other outside civilization, civilizations come in, they got to pass this test of not being murderers because, you know, we're not just going to let them, anyone come in here, especially if they have that killer instinct. But the fact they chose not to kill... And they figured it out, you know. It's like, hey, it's not real. I don't know. Neat. Yeah, um, I kind of called it, but the uh, kind of whole ending of like, oh, they got out of it because he chose not to kill. Kind of similar to the arena episode where he doesn't kill the Gorn. Except in that, not to say that it didn't, that it wasn't earned there, because I do think I liked that ending too. But here, it's really set up throughout the whole episode. Like, Chekhov gets killed. So Kirk wants his revenge. He, you know, he goes and talks to, the, I believe, the sheriff. And he's telling him, like, I can't kill. Like, you know, just morally, I'm not going to kill these people, even though he wants to. And the guy's even trying to convince him, like, kill him any way you can. They get into the duel and everything. And Kirk still makes the decision not to kill him. So it, it was earned. It made sense to me as to why that would get them out of the situation and convince this uh, alien creature that they're not there to, you know, kill them. So, uh, I enjoyed that. Yeah, just a lot of, like, good direction, too, here, uh, from, um, Vincent McGeevity. Um, like, the mind meld shots, where, like, they were all close up was really cool. Um, and just a lot of interesting stuff like that. The set, I think there are pros and cons. Like, I liked the randomness and, like, kind of the dream atmosphere of it. But then it's, like, there's a fine line between it, like, looking like that because it's a stylistic choice versus just, like, 
it's not that well of a set, you know, <laughs> like it's not that well put together and yeah. you know, probably had a low budget. So it's kind of like you have to excuse some things to buy into the premise, but I appreciate it's a dream. It's, it's not real. Ah. Yeah, I, I appreciated that they put forth the effort of like the things like the floating clock, you know, just to make sure it's obvious to you what they're going for uh, mm -hmm. to make it a little bit easier to excuse. Um, Everyone uh, that was uh, a guest star on this one was like perfectly casted. Everyone like looked like they probably just got off the set of another cowboy show or they're actual people from the 1800s. Uh, very well acted. There was really like no bad performances from any of them. Like, especially the bartender, where he's like, oh, you're, you're pulling my chain, you're joking. And he's like, he has to look at him as if he is an actual cowboy here. Well, that was great. The whole thing with the uh, tranquilizer is still, like, weird. It's like, they just know that they have all this stuff and it's going to work. I, I, again, with the premise, I still, like, don't want 100%. Like, it's not totally clear to me, but... Um, at the end of the day, I'm not going to like hold that against it too much. It's whatever. I bought into it for the most part. You said that you thought all the performances were good. I think that this character really leaned on the, the characters and the performances. Uh, not that the plot was super thin, but compared to some other episodes, there wasn't a ton of plot here. So there were very long scenes of just the characters talking to each other. And honestly... As someone who complains about pacing very frequently, I didn't mind it. Like, this was absolutely a slow episode, but it was a slow burn, like, in a good way, where we just got these long scenes to sit with the characters that I really enjoyed. Like, right after Chekhov dies, when they're putting together the tranquilizer and, you know, talking to Spock about his emotions and all that, uh, was really good. Um, and even the Chekhov scenes, his storyline with the woman, like you said, that was one of my favorite parts of the episode. Just any time a side character gets a little story, I'm going to be a sucker for that, you know, this season, because I just love seeing them get more tie put into their, their characters. So really liked all that stuff. Just as far as cons, I would just say, again, the story itself, not really my thing. I'm not a Western guy. I'm not a period piece fan. So just not really up my alley. But I think that duel at the end, you know, really did make up for that but a lot of the stuff it's like uh eh, this is just isn't the type of story that's kind of my preferred thing i just recently watched some sergio leone films like the good and the bad of the ugly and the fistful of dollars and a few dollars more movies so i'm almost on a little western kick so this was kind of nice and weird to see my favorite characters from the future in this set it was kind of neat i still think they dropped the ball not having clint eastwood in this in some way that would have it probably would have broken the internet or the equivalent at that time. I am curious from the Western perspective because I know uh, a lot of the, um, our comments have been excited for this episode. I'm wondering um, for you guys watching, are you a fan of these references that they're making or movies uh, you know, like Tombstone or any of the Clint Eastwood movies or anything? I've never gotten into any of those from, you know, the perspective of just like, not that I don't like them. I just have never watched them because like I said, Westerns have never been my thing. So if there's any really good ones that we could check out, um, definitely let us know. Cause that'd be something I would be interested in. Cause I'm just so blind to any of it that if I could, if I could see one that's like really good and gets me hooked in, then it's like, maybe I could open my mind a little bit more to the genre, but I've just never been hooked in by it. So I would be open to those recommendations for sure. Also, I think the show does a pretty good job of not punishing you too much for not knowing the original story. I think they fill in enough with uh, the exposition, but I, I but I will agree there are all those moments where if you do know, like the guy in the barber's chair, where, where you go, <gasps> that's, bleh, you know. Yeah. Overall, this probably isn't going to make uh, like a list of my favorites, but uh, I really did enjoy it. And there are definitely some scenes I will definitely remember like that shootout scene and just them four standing there taking all the, the shots and then just Kirk walking forward getting shot. Like it doesn't get more badass than that. Yeah, that was probably like one of the best final acts or not even ax just final like five minutes yeah i mean i'm gonna be the last one of the last people to say that a slow burn western is something i enjoy but this was uh this was one i enjoyed I, at least for this episode I, I liked it um even though it's not my favorite thing so let us know what you guys think of it uh comment down below and um, if it's your first time here make sure to subscribe watch all of star trek along with us become part of the target audience Absolutely. That'll do it for us here at the Target Audience. I'm Alex. This is Josh. We are the Target Audience. Content's made for absolutely everybody, but we think it's specifically made for us and hopefully for you as well. Thank you. We'll see you next time.